We are so thankful that you have made the choice to tune in for one of ACC's messages. You know, as you're listening and diving into the truths that are being shared, we challenge you. If you're sitting at your phone or at your computer, hop on social media and be sure to use the hashtag, you belong at ACC, as God is teaching you different things during this message. You belong at ACC and we truly mean that, which means that we would love to have you join us during one of our Sunday services at 710 Aqua Heart Road. We would love to have you jump into this message and we are believing God is going to do some awesome things in your life today. My name's John and I gotta tell you, it is an honor to be with you this morning, to serve you as a pastor here at ACC. And you know, I was listening to, to Pastor Mac and you know, I don't know about you guys, I saw a little correlation you know, we're being told that apparently uh, Father's Day is getting beat by Arbor Day, and we're having a Pinewood Derby. You see a connection there? Yeah. And, and with Pastor Matt, he is talking smack online about this competition. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm bringing my game, okay? I have not made a car yet, but I'm going to beat him. I know it. I just know it. I'm certain one of you guys are going to probably beat both of us. But um, if you've not gotten started on that, it's going to be a great uh, uh, event and just a great Sunday to get together. And, um, you know, today we are continuing on in this series on the book of Ephesians. And as we've been talking about this, we've been looking at different mysteries and, and things along those lines. And, you know, Pastor Matt, he came up here. And as he was talking about mysteries last week, I love the fact that, you know, he, he, he's got this magician thing going on. You know, where he can, he can pick whatever card you, you're thinking or whatever it is. And I thought, you know what? I need to bring my own set of cards, okay? Because first and foremost, I need you guys to know I am playing with a full deck. <laughs> I don't want you to miss it. I play with a full deck on a regular basis. And within this understanding, you know, sometimes I can be a card. And it is, yeah, that's a little, it's just getting dad jokes. See, we're getting ready for Father's Day. But in addition to that, what I, so, he, so here's my, this is, this is, this is mine, okay? This is, this is my magic trick, okay? Now, I'm going to guess what card you're thinking of. King of Hearts. I was right, right? Yeah. That's about as much magicianship as I have, okay? So that, that's what you're going to see with that. But, but here's the deal. As we look at the book of Ephesians, and we look at, at, at this word mystery. In the Greek, this word is actually um, mystery, mysterion, mysterion. And when we think about this word, we oftentimes think of things that are hidden, hidden secrets. And in antiquity, in antiquity, there would be these mystery religions. And in the mystery religion, there would be like an initiation, and you would be given this secret information, and you weren't supposed to share it with anybody. And apparently, they were really good at this because we don't know a lot of these secrets, okay? But it was meant to be hidden. Whereas when we read in the scriptures about mystery, when we, when we read of this word, it's not so much hidden truth, it is actually meant to be truth revealed, truth manifest. It's something that, you know, we want to tell you what it is, God wants us to know what it is and for us to share it with one another and with the world. And so it's very different. We don't know what the mystery religions said. We don't know what these people said, but we do know what God's word says. Okay, so this morning we're going to dive into the book of Ephesians. But first, let's go to the Lord with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for how you love us. We thank you for how you work in and through us, and we thank you that you continually reveal the truth of Scripture to us, that you reveal your Son, Jesus, to us more and more each day. Father, we ask that as we seek to mature in our faith, that you would just grow us up. Help us to hear your word and, and put it into not only our hearts and our minds, but into all of our actions in every day. We ask in Jesus Christ's name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. Well, as I put together this message in Ephesians 4, I thought about the fact that, you know, as a church, what, what do we look like? What, what's a good example of talking about the, maturity, the mystery of maturity? Because, you know, when we get to Ephesians 4, 
we don't see the word mystery anywhere. We see it throughout the book of Ephesians, but we don't see it in Ephesians 4. And there's almost a sense in which Paul, an early follower of Jesus, wants to say, hey, there is no mystery about maturity. I want to make it very clear to you. So when we talk about the mystery of maturity, maybe you've not known it, and we're going to look at what he says and make it very clear. Now, as I've thought about this, I thought about what would be the the best context to talk about this. Maybe I would talk about my life group or one of your life groups, and I could very easily do that. But recently, I was on a go adventure to the Dominican Republic, and I got the honor of being part of this team, okay? This team, they they are seriously amazing. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) This team... It, it seriously, I can't, I can't express any more that this was my dream team. I've done, I've done mission trips. I've been on mission trips nine times, but this particular one, it just felt like a dream team. And I'm going to talk a little bit about it this morning, but you know, everybody came with their own level of maturity, their own moment of starting in faith. And here they were going to the Dominican. In fact, you know, we've, we've already as a church this year, we've gone to Honduras, we've gone to the Dominican, and here shortly we're going to be going to, um, we have a, a, a couple, a family who's going to Sierra Leone, but we're also going to South Africa, and we're also going to Ecuador, okay? And so you can be in prayer for all of those uh, teams. However, in the midst of this, I thought, you know, I want to share some of of what God is doing amongst us as we go through the book of Ephesians. So let's just begin in Ephesians 4.1. It says this, Therefore I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. So from right out the gate, right over here in Ephesians 4, Paul is saying, hey, I'm a prisoner for Christ. I am writing to you from Christ. A prison cell. I'm writing to you from jail. Live worthy. And the fact that he is in prison, he's in prison for Christ. He is in prison for sharing Christ. He's not in prison for anything else. It's not because of wrongdoing. And so he's writing this and he's saying, Live worthy of the calling. Live worthy of the one who died for you on the cross. And he goes on and he says, Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the Spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. So this morning, as we explore the five mysteries of maturity in Christ revealed, the first thing that we see is this. Maturity in Christ protects the bond of peace. It protects the bond of peace. It makes allowance for other people's faults. Because so often in life, don't we really, we, we want grace, we want mercy, we want forgiveness for us and judgment for others. Now, if you're like, no, 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 Pastor John, no, I, I am always in favor of grace. Really? Let me just ask a question. When you see somebody, you know, you're going like 70 miles an hour and somebody zips by you going 100 miles an hour and you didn't see them coming. And about two miles up the road, you see them on the side of the road and divine judgment has taken place with the police. You're like, praise God, absolutely, judgment. He deserves it. We all know it. Thanks a lot. I got pulled over. No, it wasn't me. But maturity in Christ protects the bond of peace. We never critique for criticism's sake. We come with curiosity or a little bit of truth, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But in terms of talking about the bond of peace, this this is talking about unity. Unity, being connected. And when we were in the Dominican, one, one of our team members was reading through a devotional, and one of the first days, I think it may have even been like the first day that we were there, thereabouts, they came and they said, hey, I heard this word, I, you know, in the devotion this morning, and, and it's phenomenal. And she started talking about zebras, and you're like, zebras? Yeah, zebras. You see, zebras 
You know, they don't have, um, you know, large talons. They don't have sharp teeth. They don't even have porcupine pills, quills. They don't have anything like that. You know what they have? Stripes. That's what they have to protect themselves. That's what God has given them. And the way that they protect themselves is by staying together in unity. If they are suddenly off to the side and they basically are alone, they're isolated, that is when they are most vulnerable. That's true of the body of Christ. And this morning, if, if you're sitting here going, I don't know what I believe about Jesus, great. We're glad that you're here. This is a great opportunity to learn more about Jesus, to learn about what the church is supposed to be like. And so we just want you to know we're glad that you're here, whether you are here in the auditorium, over in the lounge, or online. We're glad that you're here. But within this, we have to be intentional, just like zebras. We've got to be intentional about that unity. It doesn't just happen. And Paul goes on in verse 4. He says, For there is one body... And one spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future, there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all, in all, and living through all. This is speaking of the body of Christ specifically. Remember, this is a letter to the body of Christ. This isn't just for everybody. This is Paul talking to a church of believers who are following Jesus. And he says, listen, there is no place for disunity. There's no place for any of this. And he goes on and he says, and he says, however, he has given each one of us a special gift through the generosity of Christ. In essence, he's saying all of us is better than any of us. All of us. Can you look at, look at your neighbor and just say, all of us is better than any of us. That's right. Because we are better together. And so, when God has given these gifts, it's, it's, it's important to understand that if you don't use your gift, everyone's missing out. In fact, when we went to the Dominican, one of the things that I said was, hey, we need to use all of our gifts. Whatever your gift is, you need to be using it. We all have gifts. And you know what? You have this gift and I don't. And you have this gift and I don't. And so there are things that you can do that I can't do. It may be a gift of encouragement. It may be uh, praying for healing. It may be, I don't know what it is. Whatever it is, whatever that gift is that God has given you, we're better together. Okay? We are certainly better together. And God has given every follower of Jesus a gift. Now, you may be sitting there going, well, Pastor John, I don't know. I, I, you know, I'm not, I don't really have any gifts. I got some, you know, talents. I can, no, 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 no. If you're a follower of Jesus, you have the Spirit of God in you. When you received Christ as your Lord and Savior, okay? You were given gifts. You have the Holy Spirit residing inside of you. And you, have, you may, some of you have multiple gifts, and some of you may just not know what it is. And we are better together when we are acting in our gifts, when we are actually practicing our gifts. Paul goes on and he says in Ephesians 4, 11 and following, he says, he, going down a little, he says, now these are gifts Christ gave to the church. Now, he's turning from individual gifts to a grace gift given to the church. He says, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers, their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. Now, did you notice something there? So often it can feel in a church like, well, you know, evangelist. It's, it's their job. It's the, it's the pastor's job. It's the minister's job. It's the evangelist's job to go out and share Jesus. That, that's, that's, that's their calling. Well, I don't have to actually know God's word. We have teachers. We, we have people who can teach that. I don't, I don't have to be in there. Well, how do you... I'm sorry, but what if I'm wrong? What if I misquoted it? What if... I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not God. Pastor Matt's not God. So how are you going to know that what we're saying is true unless you're in God's word. You see, these things are important, and yet, God says in his word, these have been given. They've been given to the body of Christ. To do what? To equip the body of Christ. To do good works that he prepared in advance, as Paul says earlier in the book of Ephesians. To equip, 
to be sent out. These are important. I love what Tony Dungy, a a believer and former NFL coach, says. He says, engage, educate, equip, encourage, empower, energize, and elevate. Those are the methods for maximizing the potential of any individual team, organization, or institution for ultimate success and significance. Those are the methods of a mentor leader. Mentor leaders empower others. This is, this is what these five offices do. They equip and they empower the body of Christ to work in unity, to reach people for Christ, to be a foretaste of God's kingdom even as we live with one another. And Paul goes on and he says in Ephesians 4, 13, this will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Okay, so newsflash here, okay? Kind of looking at this. When are we going to continue to be equipped till? When, when are we going to need to use our gifts? Until Jesus comes back. Until he comes back, there's a purpose and a plan for every single one of your gifts. There's a, there's a, there's a purpose because you may not have this gift, but they do. We're better together. And this leads to, to our second uh, point. Maturity in Christ practices faith in community. Faith in community. You know, there's some 59 times in God's Word, in the New Testament specifically, 59 times where there's these things called one another's. Now, the word is used multiple places, but these are one another's of the faith that you can't do alone, such as love one another, pray for one another, honor one another, admonish one another, serve one another, comfort one another, encourage one another, pray for one another, build up one another, forgive one another, teach one another. You can't do it on your own because we're not made, we're not meant to live life on our own. As the people of God, the ecclesia, as it's called, it literally means gathering. Yeah, church, it's not the building, it's the gathering of God's people. And so as we gather, that's how people see what God's like. Jesus said, he said, uh, they will know you're my followers by, by what? By your buildings? No. By your love for one another. Over the years, I've had people say, you know, well, this Sunday I'm, I'm going to God's church. And they say it in that twain, by the way. Um, but I'm going to God's church. And what they really mean is I'm going out into the forest alone. I'm sorry. That, that's God's creation. It's his good creation. But it's not God's church. It's, a, it's an amazing, amazing cathedral, as it were. But it's not. God's church. God's church is the people, the gathering of God's people, those who are followers of Christ. And when I look at these one another's, I do think about the one another's best being lived out here at ACC in our, in our life groups. But I also, I had the privilege of seeing the one another's in practice when I was in the Dominican. You see, when I went to the Dominican, when we went to the Dominican, there was something that I left behind that I just could not seem to find throughout the entire trip. My voice. You can imagine what that felt like for me. I lost my voice early on, and I would be talking, and at the end, there would be times where I didn't have a voice, and I would just simply have to look at a group member and go, And they would know what I wanted to say. They became my voice. And then I'd look at another group member and I would say something and be like, and they would have a voice. And then other people, they're like, we got to do this. Like, I might even do one of these sometimes. And like, the whole group knew, okay, this is what's being said, yet he's saying nothing. (laughs) It was beautiful. It was wonderful. But there were also other moments. Like, when we talk about that zebra, there were moments where, you know what, we would have something happen. Like we had one group member who got some bad news from back in the States. And they were off on their own, alone. And I love the fact that we found out that as soon as they got the news, they, they thought, I need to be with the group. But even before that, there was a group member over here that saw them and walked to them and said, hey, I can, I can see something's going on. 
Zebras got to stick together. This was a theme that went throughout the entire week. We just kept on saying, zebras got to stick together. Zebras got to stick together. You see, we all had to work together. None of us could be off going rogue here or there. We seriously had to stick together throughout this whole time. And in Ephesians 4, 14, I love what it says here because this also speaks of this group. It says, then, this is as we're practicing gifts, as we are being equipped, as we're living in unity. Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. So clever it sounds like the truth. You ever played that game, Two Truths and a Lie? Yeah, people say two truths and a lie, and you're like... Uh, I'm not sure which one of these. And I, I heard the best, the best response. You can use this yourself the next some, time somebody does this. This guy was speaking about how there's two truths and a lie, and he simply says, uh, okay, two truths and a lie. Um, I love two of you and hate one of you. And he just leaves. Maybe that's a little harsh, isn't it? But it's one of those things of, you know, two truths and a lie... They all sound horrible, or they all sound great. I, I don't know which one to pick. And there are moments where we just simply have to be able to speak the truth in love, not in criticism, in love. There has to be a purpose and a plan in the midst of it. But this leads to our third point, and that is maturity in Christ produces abundant fruit of the Spirit. Now, within our particular group in the Dominican, when I was looking at this, I thought about how God was moving every single one of us in one way, shape, or form. Just all of us were moving. And I thought about, you know, one of our team members, Robert. I remember about three years ago, three years ago, Robert was right over here in the baptistry. He had just come to Christ. And he came out. And this guy, I love Robert. I have never met somebody who asked so many questions. But he wasn't asking questions in the Dominican. He was just observing. He's like, I'm processing this. There's a lot. But we watched him bear good fruit. We watched as he worked with a team to, to build uh, a stage for a church with, with the Dominicans and with the group. We watched as on a Sunday morning in the Dominican church, he got up front and he started giving a communion meditation, half in Spanish and half in English because he had a translator, but he also knew some Spanish. We watched him be stretched. I think of another team member, uh, Jessie Wilder. You may know her. Jessie is an amazing woman of God, okay? And, and here's the thing. I remember she shared about how she had never been on a mission trip before. In fact, Robert hadn't been on a mission trip before either. But Jesse had a skill that the rest of us didn't have. She knows Spanish. She knows it fluently. And I remember we had conversations. Jesse, why don't you're going to be teaching the the woman in, in this in this group? Why don't you do it in Spanish? Nope, nope, not going to happen. I'm using the translator. And this was a conversation that went back and forth, back and forth. And I don't think it was just with me. I think other people were coming around too. And by the time that we got to the Dominican, I think I actually kind of laid off, and I'm like, all right, we're here now. And I just expected that she was going to use the translator. And then she got up, and she started teaching this group of women. And I don't know what she said, because I don't know Spanish. <laughs> but I hear it was really good. One of our partners there in the Dominican, Harold, he said, man, she can preach. It was good. You know, not quite like that. That's just my version of it. But, but in any case, she stepped out. She stepped out of the boat. You want to know what's really stepping out of the boat? You interested in being, being part of a Go Adventure next year in the Dominican? She's leading it. She's leading it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. She stepped out of her comfort zone. And, and that's the thing. Maturity in Christ produces abundant fruit in the Spirit. And if you're wondering, well, what's the fruit of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, kindness, 
self-control, against these things there is no law. You can do any of these. God's good with it. God's good with it. Using your gifts, you'll never have to worry. Like, oh man, was that okay? Yes. You were ministering grace in another person's life. I think of one story when we were in the Dominican. This particular individual was in a situation where they, they talked, uh, if I understand it correctly, they talked with a prostitute. And that prostitute shared that they had not eaten in three days. And that last night, their meal was a glass of water and a sugar packet. And they became the hands and the feet of Jesus Christ. You see, each one of these people that I keep on talking about, they all represent all of us. This is you and me because we are the body of Christ and we are meant to minister in whatever gift that God has given us together, together. Paul goes on, he says, with the Lord's authority I say this, live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gives because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against Him. They have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. But that isn't what you learned about Christ. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from Him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, He says, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and your attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. And I love how he wraps this particular portion up. He says, so stop telling lies. Let us tell our neighbors the truth, for we are all parts of the same body. Another version says, for we are all members of one body. Now get that. All members of one body, the body of Christ. You know, I know that some of you guys watch uh, some of these mystery, murder mysteries and, and things like that, or you read the books and such. Now, if you are watching something like this, and, you know, you see the person, and they're running on the trail, and suddenly they see a single appendage of the body, they don't just keep on running or walking, do they? They stop in their tracks, and they're like, something's wrong here. Something is wrong here. It's meant to be connected to the rest of the body, right? I remember years ago hearing a, a minister by the name of Chuck Swindoll talk about, imagine a giant eyeball coming into the church and kind of going down one of the rows. You'd be like, There's, th this is weird. What's going on? But sometimes we act as if we are disconnected from the rest of the body of Christ. All of us can't be eyes. All of us can't be ears. All of us can't be feet or hands or anything like that. And as the body of Christ, you know, when, when we're missing a hand, we start looking like Captain Hook, maybe. Or maybe, you know, we're missing a leg and we start, we're just kind of hopping around. It doesn't look like, hey, listen, it doesn't look like everything is happening the way that it's supposed to be. We need people who have gifts of, of, of uh, mercy. We need people who have gifts of, of teaching. We, we need people who have gifts of, of whatever it is, encouragement. Every single one of us. Does anybody ever not need encouragement? Does anybody ever not need hope? No, we all need it. And that's why at the body of Christ as we come together, we see that. And this leads to our next point, and that is maturity in Christ provides a clear path. It provides a clear path because so often, I've heard these these questions over the years. How do I know God's will? I, I feel like God's not talking to me. How, you know, John, you say that maturity in Christ provides a clear path, but I'm, I'm in the middle of the, I feel like it's a fork in the road. I'm not certain what to do. And to that, I would say, well, have you prayed about it? Well, no. 
Okay, first, maybe you should pray about it. The second thing is, does God's word say, don't do that? (laughs) If God's word says, don't do it, it's really clear, don't do it. If he says, hey, this is good, go do it. Guess what? You can do it. There are things that are very clearly yes or no. Sometimes we also get a choice. We get a choice. That's one of the first gifts that we were given at creation, the the ability to have free will and choose. So maturity in Christ provides a clear path because as we follow Jesus, we not only have the words, we have the Holy Spirit residing in us, enabling us to do what we can't do on our own. And we're connected as the body of Christ in such a way that, guess what? When I'm not hearing, I'm going to go to my life group. If I'm in the Dominican, I'm going to talk to the church in the Dominican or I'm going to talk with my, my uh, Go Adventure team. I'm going to say, hey, listen, I, I, I'm having some, a hard time hearing, okay? Does anybody else got any ears on this? Anybody else hearing anything? Does anybody else have a word, like, from Scripture? Because God's Word is living and active. And here's the thing. There are moments that, you know, we can try to have advice, but the best advice is from God's Word. And we just say, you know what, I'm not certain, but I know that this is what God's Word says. And so this is what you should do. Somebody comes and says, you know, I'm struggling in my marriage and and I'm thinking about separating. I'm not certain. I've been praying about it and I'm not sure what God wants me to do. I can go to God's Word and I can see what God wants. Yeah, it says that God hates divorce, but is there mercy in it? Maybe you've gone through a divorce or maybe you're going through one. does, Does God have forgiveness and mercy and grace? Yes, He does. He also has strength too that will help you to continue to go. He gives the body of Christ to help you to continue to grow in your marriage, to reconcile, maybe a family member that you need reconciliation with. All of those things. Paul continues on in verse 30 and he says, and do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified you as his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God, through Christ, has forgiven you. Next point is, maturity in Christ prompts us to live for God. You see, we stop living for ourselves We live for God and for God alone. And again, I don't know where you are in your walk with Christ, but I I wrote these words down that I saw earlier this week because I went, wow, I don't know who needs to hear this. I know that I need to hear it, but I I think that someone here needs to hear it. I think that all of us probably even need to hear it, but here it is. You'll never look into the eyes of someone who does not matter to God. Hear that clearly. You're angry, fits of rage, hatred. Guess what? That person matters to God. You feel like you are unforgivable, that thing that nobody else knows about you. It's forgivable. God loves you. God loves you so much that he sent his son to die for you. You will never look in the eyes of someone who does not matter to God, and that includes you. That includes us, all of us. And so as we move to uh, our what now God moment, because each week when we come together as a church, we don't want to just hear God's word and, and then just leave. We want to put it into practice. It's not enough just to know the truth. We need to put it into practice, okay? And I just got a few words within here. Protect, practice, produce, path, and prompts. Within all of these, there's this question for each one of us. In terms of protecting unity, are you protecting unity? Are you actually protecting the unity of the body of Christ? When somebody comes to you and they say, hey, did you hear what so-and-so did? No, and I don't really need to. Have you gone to them and talked to them? 
Hey, have you heard what, what so-and-so's struggling with? No, I haven't. Have you prayed for them? Have you talked to them? Whatever it is, there are so many things within the unity of Christ that we can sometimes miss, even in good intentions. We need to go according to God's word. How about practice? Are you serving one another in community? Serving one another is something that we can only do together. We can't do it individually. We have to serve one another, love one another, forgive one another. For some of you, you've been burned by the church. You have. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you were burnt by the church. I've been burnt by the church. I'm not talking about ACC, but we're not perfect either. I've heard it said before, if you find a perfect church, don't go. You'll ruin it. I, I know it's true. It's one of the reasons I was willing to come here. I went, they look like me. They look like me. They look like people who want to follow Jesus and they know that they are imperfect people serving a perfect God. Amen? How about produce? What kind of fruit are you producing today? You know, if God looked over at your tree, you know, it might, it might be a tree with good fruit. But he looks at it and he goes, yeah, I see that it's got good fruit, but it's all rotten. It's all from the past. There's nothing going on today. There's nothing fresh. Guess what? It's time to start bearing good fruit. But you might be over here and it's a tree with bad fruit. You don't even know Jesus. And he wants you to know him. God wants you to know him. There's no question in my mind of that. You matter to God. You matter to God. So what, what kind of fruit are you producing? And be honest with yourself. And if, if, if you're wondering or you're not sure, if, if you're married, ask your spouse. They will gladly let you know. In love. If you're not married, ask your friends, what are you seeing in my life? Even better, if you're part of a life group, ask them, what are you seeing in my life? Give them the ability to speak into you, into your life. Path, what path are you on? Are you on a path walking towards Jesus or away from Jesus? Did you notice what I said there? I didn't say, are you a believer or a non-believer? Because some of you guys, you're not sure what you believe yet, but you are walking towards Jesus. You're walking towards Jesus. And some of you have been following Jesus for a long time, but maybe recently, you know, you've been backing up. You've been going towards some other paths. It's time to get right on right path. Get back on the right path. Prompts. The Holy Spirit prompts us to live for God. Allow those prompts to speak into your heart. You know, maybe maybe, maybe you had one of those things like I did years ago. Maybe when you were hearing about the Dominican, you, went, you, know, you heard the Holy Spirit say, I want you to go there or I want you to go on a go adventure. Maybe you heard that last year. I remember hearing God say, I want you to go to China. And I went, that's not God, that's me. It took me a year and a half to finally listen and it changed my life maybe God's calling you to something and it might not be overseas it might be across the street to your neighbors sometimes it can be easier to go overseas than to go across to the fence and talk to your neighbor but that is who God's calling you to talk to you know I don't have card tricks I don't but I do have this one truth I know that in every deck, there's only one king of hearts. And in this world, there is only one God. And the question is, is he the king of your heart? Is he truly the king of your heart? If he's not, he wants to be. And if he is, get on the path. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you thanking you for who you are, who you've created us to be as the body of Christ. We thank you that we've never seen somebody who doesn't matter to you, and that includes us. And though we may feel far from you sometimes, Lord, you are right there 
waiting for us to open our eyes to everything that you have for us. Father, help us to live in the truth of the gospel. Help us to use our gifts. Help us to bear good fruit and help us to be united as the body of Christ. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. You know, we have all these Go Adventures that are going on, but you know, within the body of Christ, within Arundel Christian Church, I love the fact that throughout the year, there are times that I hear about people who, they're like, hey, listen, you're not going to this place, but I, got, I, I know God's calling me there. And we have a couple, actually a family, that is going to Sierra Leone here shortly. The Mush Rushes, uh, they're going to be heading to Sierra Leone, and they can use our prayers, okay? One of the things that we can be praying for is Molly, their daughter, something's going on with her passport. So in a moment, we're just going to pray for them as, as a church, they're going to be over there for two weeks. I'm going to pray for Molly's passport specifically. Can we do that? All right. Father, we come to you praying for the mush rushes, praying for Brian and Haley and their family and asking, Father, that you would strengthen them, that you would ready them, that you would break up the ground there in Sierra Leone, that you would help them to work with the church in Sierra Leone. Father, that you would help them to minister through medicine that you would help them to minister through prayer, that you would help them to minister in whatever way you call them to, and that you would provide that passport in a timely fashion along with visas and everything else that's needed along the way. And we ask for divine appointments along the way, and we ask this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Well, we are so thankful for the truth that was shared in this message today. Please know that we, as a church, are praying that what you have learned today, the truths that God has put deep into your heart, will manifest themselves and grow themselves into something amazing. And as always, you can experience that with other believers, other people who are walking this walk of faith at ACC on Sunday mornings. Please remember this, you belong at ACC.